basic API management tasks with the Layer 7 API proxy. In this video, we'll see how to publish an API on the Layer 7 API proxy, how to apply access control using HMAC signatures, how to do rate limiting and apply service level quotas, and how to transform between JSON and XML from the responses from the API. The Layer 7 gateway is an intermediary between your API consumers and your API endpoints. Here, I'm going to use the Layer 7 Policy Manager to publish an API on the Layer 7 gateway. For this example, I'm going to use the REST Client Firefox plugin to interact with the Google Search API. I can control the HTTP method, the URI, and I see the response header and response body coming back to me. Now, using the Layer 7 Policy Manager, I want to click on Publish REST Web API or Other Service. That brings up a wizard where I'm going to define a service name, a target URL, and a, an entry point URI for resolving to that service. I click Finish. Now I have a very simple policy in the policy manager for that service, which only routes to the Google API. If I go back to my REST client, I'll change the host and the URI so that I'm uh, going to send this API client to the gateway instead. I'm going to send a request again and I get back a response from the gateway. Now the next thing we're going to do is add some access control in the policy for that service. So the client is going to send an AWS style HMAC signature in the request and the gateway will look up an API key from a, uh, an API key store, verify an HMAC and apply authorization based on that. So now back in the layer 7 policy manager, uh, if, if first I look at the palette of assertions here, there's a lot of things I can use to build access control rules, but I'm going to create a policy fragment here, call it check HMAC authentication, and I'm going to import a policy sample that does this HMAC authentication. Now, if I look at this policy, one of the first thing it does is parse out the incoming uh, HMAC token using a regular expression. And this regular expression also serves as uh, uh, to achieve some input sanitization, which will prevent things like SQL injection later on in the policy. So after the policy, I'm actually setting the variables that I extracted using my regular expression. And then I'm actually gonna consult my API key store using a SQL query. So there's lots of different ways you could do that, but in this case, I'm using a key name that was referred to in my authorization header to load an API key. And then with this API key, I can actually generate my own HMAC here. So there's lots of different uh, algorithms that I can use for that. In this case, we're using HMAC SHA-1. And then I, in, in the end, I'm gonna compare the, the HMAC I calculate with the one that came in into the request. So that's all good. I'm saving that and I'm going to now include this HMAC policy fragment in my Google search API and save it. Now back to Firefox client here. If I try to hit that, uh, that API again, I get a 401 uh, error here. So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, an authorization header and I'm going to put in uh, a value which includes uh, my HMAC which refers to my uh, uh, account ID and then if I try it with that, I get the response back again. Okay, for the next task here, what we're going to do is apply some SLA, some quota enforcement based on a contract information that I'm looking at at runtime. Now back to the layer 7 policy manager again, if I go back to the SQL statement that loads uh, the API key, I'm actually going to go and, and load from the same table a contract information. 
and I'm going to export this out of the policy fragment so that it can be referred to in my service policy. So if I go back to my Google search API policy, I now have a, uh, uh, an or statement. We have two different branches. So either the contract uh, uh, contains the subscriber value, in which case we're going to allow 10,000 uh, messages per hour using that throughput quota. Otherwise, we're going to enforce a quota of 10 per hour. Now, back in my REST client here, I, if I refer to an account here that has uh, the subscriber uh, value, I can consume this as many times as I want, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, if I go and change my authorization token here so that I refer to an account that doesn't have that subscriber property, I get a quota exceeded response of 401. Okay, the next task we want to do is make sure that the content type that's returned by the API respects the accept header coming in. You can see here that the Google API, the way that it works right now, if I add an accept header here with the value text XML and I send the request, I'm still getting JSON payload back. It doesn't matter whether I, I refer to a, an accept that has text XML or text JSON, I always seem to be getting JSON. Now back in my policy, uh, I have another fragment here called from JSON response to XML or JSON. So if I open this and look at that, let's see what that does. So there's an OR statement here. And I'm actually evaluating the uh, accept header if it's present. And, and, and I look for the presence of, of XML. And if it does require XML, I'm going to apply a JSON transformation using this specialized assertion. So back to my service policy, my Google Search API policy, I'm actually going to include that fragment after the route assertion so that it, it gets applied to the response message. So I'm going to include that policy fragment in my main policy. I'm going to save this and I should be good to go. Now back to my API client, if I go and add the accept header again with the value text XML and I send this request, you see that I'm now getting an XML pillow back. So the content type is text XML. So this is an, uh, a real-time transformation that's done by the policy enforcement point. Now we just went through a number of very basic API management tasks, but you can do a lot more with the layer seven API proxy. Whether it's about access control, we support things like OAuth, SAML, ExactMAL. You can do monitoring of your API traffic with the device. You can do reports. You can generate alerts based on uh, custom thresholds. Uh, there's a lot of content validation as part of the assertion palette, whether it's schema validation, JSON schema validation, also a lot of transformation uh, related functionality. And the Layer 7 API proxy is available under a number of different form factors. So first, it's a VMware certified virtual appliance. You can instantiate an image of the device directly on your VMware infrastructure. It's also uh, on your Amazon catalog. So if you look at your AMI public images, you can instantiate it directly from there. And of course, it's also available as a hardware appliance. If you have any questions about any of this, please contact your Layer 7 representative.